beneficiaries, esteemed donors, my fellow trustees, the members of the Wish Foundation, dear family members, friends, and all that are here tonight, Salaamu Alaikum. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Dr. Murtaza Hamir, and I am one of the trustees of Wish Foundation. And I'd like to welcome you all this evening for the launching of our foundation. A uh, warm welcome to you all. Much thanks for all of you to be here tonight. Thank you so much. The Holy Quran in Surah Al Baqarah, verse number 62, tells us. Inna ladina amanu. Surely those who have acknowledged or believed. Walladina hadu. And those of the Jewish faith. Walnasara. And those of the Christian faith. Walsabiina. And those of the Sabian faith. Man amana billahi. Whoever believes in God. Walyam al akhir. And the last day. وَعَمِلَ الصَّالِحًا and does works of goodness فَلَهُمْ أَجْرُهُمْ مِنْ دَرَبِّهِمْ for them is the reward with their Lord وَلَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ they shall be no fear upon them وَلَا هُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ and neither will they grieve and this very same verse is echoed in Surah Al-Ma'idah verse number 69 and it's not just Islam and the Quran that says this in terms of works of doing good towards other fellow human beings, but all of the world's major religions, be they of the Far East, of Hinduism, Buddhism, Confucianism, Taoism, or of the Abrahamic faiths, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. Among the core tenets of these world religions is to do good for yourself, for your family members, for your loved ones, for your communities, for the strangers and for the world at large. In fact, I go a step further and I say that even without religion, there are people who are atheists, agnostics, secularists and humanists. And they too are ethical human beings and moral human beings and they too believe in doing goodness for their communities and the world at large. If there is one factor that unites humanity across the board, it is Amilu Saleh, good works. Now the Canadian psychologist Jordan Peterson has written a book called 12 Rules for Life in which he states rule number seven to be pursue what is meaningful, not what is expedient. I repeat, pursue what is meaningful, not what is expedient. So one may ask, what is meaningful? What constitutes a meaningful life? I can think of a couple of things. I'm sure everyone here can, has an idea or two in regards to what makes your lives meaningful. But I'm sure we all agree that one of the certain way in which one's life becomes meaningful is to serve others, to add value to someone's life, to make a difference to someone's life. Because if you make a difference in one's life, you become meaningful to that person. And in that process of you becoming meaningful, your life attains meaning. Human beings have been on this planet for a long time. If you ask the biologists, they'll tell you at least 100,000 years. And from, now till, from then till now, we figured out quite a few things. One of them being is that when we come together, with our different skills and abilities from all walks of life and aim towards a single goal, a common aim, we can achieve great things. And history has borne witness to that in the past. It continues to bear witness today as we carry along and it will bear witness to the same in the future to come. So what's the word here? Organization. When human beings organize themselves we do wonderful things together. Wish Foundation is one such organization. 
What a beautiful title, Wish, to fulfill one's wishes, especially those in need, the less fortunate. Ms. Farzana Hashem will come in a little while and tell us all about Wish, where it came from, where it's currently at, and where we're heading. But for now, I'd like to invite Mr. Mujtaba Hassan to bless this evening, bless this occasion with a recitation from the Holy Quran. Tafadda. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem Bismillahir rahmanir rahim Ara'ayta alladhi yukadzibu biddeen Fadhalika alladhi yadu'u al-yateem ولا يحز على تام المسكين فويل للمسلين الذين هم عن صلاتهم ساهون الذين هم يراؤون ويمنعون الماء much, uh, so much for the recitation I, it is my hope that the audience was looking at the translation during the recitation this is one of those short surahs of the Qur'an among the Meccan surahs that hits at the core of what Islam is all about. And towards the end of the verses, the author of the Qur'an literally curses those who pray but refuse small kindnesses. Thank you so much for the recitation. Thank you so much Dr. Murtaza for the introduction. Good evening to you all. I stand before you on behalf of my team to take you to the journey of our organization for the past six years. So many of you know us as Huizusen Zanzibar. We've been working with Huizusen Zanzibar for six years now, but as of this year, we have officially named ourselves the Wish Foundation and today being our launch event. Huizusen was first created in 2015 with the vision of organizing charitable events and projects to help and support local communities, families, and orphans. Our vision, a bigger vision being building a bright future for the local communities in Zanzibar and mission being organizing events and work on projects to promote society development. Let me introduce you to our team. I'll start with our honorable trustees, Mr. Hasnain Ramtullah, Mr. Hassan Raza, where is Mr. Hassan Raza? There he is, and Dr. Murtaza Hamir. And our wonderful hardworking team, our gem of our chairperson, Ruhina Hassan, our secretary, Fazle Basdala. Our treasurer, Ms. Mali Ramtula. And our board members, Mustafa Hassan, who's helping me out there. And Dr. Fatima Hashem. So the main areas that we work on are socioeconomic growth, health sector and infrastructure, and I'll tell you more about it as we go on. Let me take you down the memory lane and show you a journey of our organization for the past six years. Starting from 2015, the organization was founded by Ruhina and Hadia. Hadia is here with us today, and I'm so happy that she could join us for the event. First event was held at Nazimoja Hospital, distribute food to patients. And that was our original team in 2015. But the, the following couple years, 2016 and 2017, we had lesser members, which made it more difficult to organize events. But we've managed to do a few things. In 2017, then, we decided to form the new team, which the, is the team that you see now. There was an event that we did in the village to distribute gifts to the children. 
look at the joy on their faces. And we had our first interfaith event uh, at the old people's home, where by not only we spent time with the old people, but also we had a dialogue with the nuns. And it was amazing to see the similarities that Muslims and Christians do have. 2018, after making our core team, we grew exponentially, having 12 events in 2018. And our first major project was building the playground at Nazimoja Hospital. As you can see in the picture on the screen, there was an opening event at Nazimoja by the medical director of Nazimoja Hospital. 2017 was the most prosperous year for us, and I am very proud of the work we have achieved. In total of 22 projects, but the highlight being Project Kachongwa. Does anybody in the crowd know where Kachongwa is? <coughs> Nobody, right? No? We had no idea as well. But we came across a video of a lady uh, in dire need of a house. It was heartbreaking to watch that video, and we could not stay still. So we decided to go see what Kachongwa was all about. It was not only heartbreaking to see the house, but the living conditions that they were in. So we decided in the year 2019 that our Ramadan project will be just Kachongwa project. So not only we managed to build a house for that lady, but we refurbished her well because they had difficulty in walking to the main road. Because Kachongwa is a small village in Matemwe, and it's a couple of kilometers away from the main road. So we refurbished the well for them, we renovated their mosque, we built the house, as well as distributed food for them in the month of Ramadan. And also we gave the children eat clothes in that year. Next. So that was uh, Project Kachongwa. Now, the thing about Ramadan, it's usually in the rainy season, but that does not stop us. So we would hold umbrellas and walk in the water, but we would make sure we give people what they deserve, at least for the month of Ramadan. So that was uh, while we're giving them gifts, and there was a food ration, and that was the house that we saw. Can you imagine living in a house like that in a rainy season? It was heartbreaking to see. So, Alhamdulillah, by the grace of God, we managed to build a house. And during the opening ceremony, this is what happened. So we were celebrating the house opening. Play the video. Uh, go back, Mustafa, play the video. So while they were jumping with joy, our hearts were jumping with joy as well. We were there with them, looking at them, celebrating while we opened the house. And I went into this mode of contemplation that the thing that we take for granted, shelter. We build big houses, but for them, that's the biggest blessing. As you can see even on the screen, there, there was an opening of another house, at Kohani. Um, which I will be talking about more. So while they were jumping, our hearts were jumping as well. 2020, the year that the pandemic hit us, not only us, but the whole world. I don't think anybody in this crowd would deny that was the most difficult year in the recent times. But we sat there anxiously and thinking that Will our work stop? But we didn't, let, we didn't stop our work. We said we're going to wear masks, put sanitizers, and keep on doing. And you won't believe, that was a year that we did the most distribution of food. Because not only we had to distribute food, but we had to find uh, relief for the flood. That year also we were hit with heavy rains, and we had a lot of uh, flood 
in uh, the villages. So the government approached us and asked for flood relief. And we managed to distribute 40 tons of food. You realize how much is 40 tons? We made 2,000 bags of ration and distributed it in the villages, especially those affected by flood. But not only that, while we were distributing the food, we came across this lady who we could not even go into her house because it was filled with water. We saw her roof, it was attached roof, but it had holes. Now imagine sleeping in a house with uh, um, holes in your roof. Not only that, in that small house, she was taking care of 11 children. Can you go next? That was the house. 11 children and the mama were staying in this house. So we went to visit the site, we saw the house, and we were actually concerned about her safety and her children. So we decided that we're going to do something about it, and it always works, and we built a house for her. That's the house that we built for her in Kowani, and that's the opening event. We are blessed to have an architect in our core team. So Brother Fazli Abbas, who is our secretary, is also our architect, which makes, he makes our life easier. Next. So the work still goes on, and this year also we had a couple of events. We had a well built, also, um, it was our first, now that we are growing, alhamdulillah, we have opened to projects in Pemba as well. Our first event was Russian distribution in Pemba, and we are in development of a house project in Pemba as we speak. And this year we also registered, finally. Six years now official, and more to come, inshallah. summarize the projects that we have completed so far. I'll start with infrastructure. We have housing projects, we have big playgrounds, well projects as well as mosque renovations, and now we are building a mosque at Gamba as well. Uh, right now, the project is going on. Next. That's a well link is in Kazi. <coughs> in health sector, we have been doing a weekly distribution of water in Nazimonia. At the maternity ward, we have done a couple of medical screening camps. We have done multiple food and um, sanitary su supply distribution at Nazimonia Hospital, as well as small local hospitals, as well as the old people's home. Somewhere where nobody actually goes, but we try to go every year. We also do annual blood donation drives and support treatment of those in need. So there are sometimes people come up to us who need assistance with their medical care as well as we assist uh, people with special needs. I'm a physiotherapist by profession, so I try to take care of those in special needs as well. That's our, one of the medical screening camp that we had, as well as our blood donation. In social economic growth, so we do many small, small things in this, but the highlight for me being our annual events. The first being the annual Ramazan Russian distribution, like we saw earlier in the pictures. But what's the beauty of this is that when we started, we started off with 50 baskets. And then even we barely got any donations. So we said, how are we going to do this? So we made sure that each one of us as a member, we contributed something towards it. And we are blessed to say that last year and this year we get 2,000 days now. So I feel very blessed to stand in front of you saying this. As well as our annual if iftar event, which is my favorite. What we do is we have around 60 children we sit with them, we play with them. When you'll be eating, you can even see some of the videos that we take of the children. 
we play with them, watch movies sometimes, and then we give them eat lots. If we enjoy eat so much celebrating, why not share the joy with others as well? So sitting with the children, talking to them, hearing their stories, playing with them, it's just something out of this world. I just love it. And I look forward to it every year. Also, we support some local uh, uh, businesses, and we start initiate small businesses to empower women. We focus on women for some reason. <laughs> Maybe because we are uh, trying to change things in Zanzibar. That's one of uh, women we uh, supported with special needs. We gave her a small capital as well as a few items so she could start up her business, as well as the other things that I have mentioned earlier as well. So currently, the activities that we are doing is a project in Pemba, like I mentioned earlier, as well as building a mosque at Gramba. But we are also working towards opening our own wish shop. I just want to say a little bit more about wish shop. That's our logo, which we also have a designer in our team. Uh, Mushtaba is a businessman, but he's also very passionate about designing. So he works for our logos and our posters and everything. See, we are a wholesome team with a lot of talent, alhamdulillah. So our biggest challenge, like many of the organizations facing right now, I'm sure, is that we're still affected by the pandemic. It hasn't gone, and it has affected our economy very much. Because of this, we hardly get any donation. People don't donate as much. So to overcome this challenge, we have decided to open our very small shop, charity shop. Our focus is going to be, we're going to get good quality used items from people, or import them, and sell them at a very small price. And whatever profit we get from it, we are going to fund it for our small projects as well as, well as to sustain our foundation. Thank you so much for listening. I wish you all well on behalf of my team and hope you have a great evening. We did it straight from your heart. And I'm pretty sure it touched everyone's heart in this room this evening. Please let's give her a big hand one more time. <laughs> Next, I'd like to call upon Mrs. Rohina Hassan and Mr. Fadla Bhaglala uh, for the question. Answer any questions, any queries you might want to know more about us, please feel free to ask. It had to be you, my son. Always. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm, I'm just curious, as always, um, why sudden change of the name from Hussein Bazwa to Wish Foundation? Uh, the main mission and vision is what the difference contains. The mission in who is Hussein Zanzibar was, the role model was Hussein bin Ali who everyone knows here is the greatest, one of the greatest role models. But it used to define, it not give us a platform to have other role models. So rather, we use WISH now. So we are free to choose any role model we want, so that we can <coughs> fulfill people's wishes. So it's not just we are confined to be to use Hussein bin Ali as a role model. I'm not saying that he's not the best role model. He's one of the best role models ever. But it used to inf not give us the room to go to check other role models who were there in this world. So that's where wish comes. And we are here to fulfill the wishes of the community at large. Thank you.